Ladies and gentlemen, heels and heelettes, welcome back to another episode of Blunt Impact. I am your boy, Chris G, joined by my co-host, my tag team partner. We formed the Pot Heels. He is the three-time, three-time, three-time baby-making champion of the world. This is Ness, and we are joined by our co-host, Mary Jane. Ness, how are you feeling tonight, brother? Feeling mighty fine, man. It's been a, been a lovely day. Went to see, uh, well, not even went to see because I watched it on HBO Max. Saw Mortal Kombat, you know, seeing some mixed reviews from people, but, you know, I enjoyed it. So now we're here to combat the mortality of pro wrestling. Whew. What a look, look fucking segue. Yeah. What a fucking segue. <laughs> This guy gets better every episode. Maybe. I'm trying, man. Hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm piggybacking off you, man. You, you laid a foundation. I'm just trying to stop. build off that. Will you stop it? I'm not that good. Uh, a weird, a weird episode of Impact. Kind of. Uh, I was mainly centered of around the building of the main event for Rebellion. Of course, this is the go home show before Rebellion, so we will be making predictions for that show at the end of this episode. But we are going to cover the April 22nd edition of Impact Wrestling. Before we get into it, we want to remind everybody at home, please hit those thumbs up. Give us a like. Give us a share. Share it with whoever. They don't even have to be alive. Just share it. Comment. Subscribe. Number one, hit that button. We want to see those subscribers go up. We want to see them subscriptions go up so we can get paid. Bump the budget. Of course, if we get paid, you guys get paid in another way. We, uh, we'll we give away free shit. You get shirts, whatever. We'll see what happens. You know, I'll throw you guys a, a gram of weed. Why not? Why not? We get to 10K, I'll, I'll send somebody a gram of weed. But put that. We're going to bake book it. Yeah. <laughs> also, before we get into this episode... We are going to light our Mary Jane. We are going to count down from three all the way to one. So whether you're smoking a blunt, a joint, out of a pipe, out of a bong, dabbing, snorting. Now you kids be snorting shit these days. You might be snorting your nuggets these days. Just whatever you're doing. Just light up with us, please. We encourage you. Ness, are you ready? Yes, sir. I'm ready. All righty. We're going to count. We're going to start at three, two, one. All right. Of course, we get the recap of last week's episode. All the storylines going into Rebellion this weekend. And we are joined on commentary, of course, by Matt Stryker and D'Lo Brown. Uh, we start this night off with Decay, Crazy Stephen Black Taurus, Taurus, versus the Good Bros. Fun little opener. Nothing too crazy. It was a quick back and forth until the good bros capitalized and they hit the magic killer. Uh, then they cut a promo on Finn Juice. They want to thank them for making them hungry again, for waking up two sleeping giants. Later on in the night, we get a Finn Juice promo from Japan. Uh, they got some witty lines from Juice. Talking about, uh, you know, if you guys are sleeping giants, you might have to go back to sleep. Something along those lines. You might be dreaming. Some good shit from Juice as usual. And uh, they're ready to defend the titles versus the Gun Brothers at Rebellion. So I'm all, I'm ready for this match. We'll predict this match later. But what do you think about the match and the promos? Yeah, I really like this opening match. I think it just ended abruptly um, that I didn't like. Uh, it was a good showing from Crazy Steve and Black Taurus, especially with these guys, you know, they don't have a good record against the Good Brothers. But they had a great showing. But again, it just came to a screeching halt, like the whole match. Um, again, it was nothing too crazy, but I just like the, the intensity that Crazy Steve and Black Taurus brought. And then, you know, the post-match, a uh, little shit-talking from the Good Brothers saying that, you know, we got a little lazy, you know, resting on our laurels because we've just been doing so, so much. Uh, 2020 was so good to us. So they're pretty much saying they're pretty much blaming their losses on their success. You know, we've been doing so well, we got lazy. 
And, you know, like you say, they, they, they're saying thanks to Finn Juice for bringing that fire, you know, making them uh, uh, focused on regaining the Impact Tag Team Championship. So I'm, I'm also just ready, ready for this match. I'm kind of, eh, the, the Finn, I like Finn Juice, but I, I don't really um, like just having them have the, the titles for like the last month or so, month and a half, just for like, I don't know. It, it, it kind of just feel like a, like it forced the storyline somewhere, somewhere that it didn't need to go because the guys is like they just don't have the titles and you know you know they just haven't been around. Uh, they've been in Japan, you know, in New Japan, but I think it would have been a little bit better if Finju's like was actively defending the titles over there and like. It's like, oh, look, we're we're fighting champions, even though we're not in Impact at the moment. We're going to defend them over here, you know. But it's neither here nor there. It is what it is. And like you said, we'll get into we'll get into the predictions for that match later on the show. Next up, we have Susan coming out with Deanna Perazzo, and she is going up against her Deanna's opponent at Rebellion, Tennille uh, Tennille Dashwood. She comes out with Caleb with a K. Uh, this match, a lot of shenanigans and fuckery. In the beginning of the match between <laughs> both Susan just, you know, threatening to call uh, Caleb's manager because he's he's being a paparazzi ass motherfucker. And uh, you know, just just Tenille being, you know, her usual self as well. We cut to a commercial break and we come back and Susan is dominating the match. Never thought I'd say that. Sue Young, I could understand. Susan dominating a match? Turns into a nice little back and forth, but finally Tenille. With some fire, might I add, finally shows some some fucking aggression. Uh, aggression uh, gets the upper hand, and she gets the W, getting some momentum before Rebellion. Post-match promo, she puts herself o- over, of course. Tells Diana to keep the title shiny because it's coming to Tenille. What did you think about the match? Yeah, this is a decent match. Uh, I, yeah, like you said, I find it funny that uh, I almost called her Karen. <laughs> That Susan is threatened to call somebody's manager out of all people. That's one. Two, it's ironic that she says it to Caleb with a K because he is the manager pretty much to to, to, to Neil Dashwood. So that's funny. Uh, yeah, man, Tanil needed some fire going into this match. Like you said, she, she put herself over. I give her her props for being a part of the women's resolution in NXT, like the original, not the original, but um, like the early days of what we know now is NXT. But she can't talk that shit in Impact, in my opinion, because that's the place where women's wrestling was taken serious for a long time, years before we even knew who Tennille Dashwood was, you know. But you know, she has to talk her shit up. But I don't know, man. I again, this is something that we're gonna talk to talk about later in the show. But I'm gonna just admit right now, I don't know which way to go with this. So I'm gonna be using all this time up till we predict this match to actually pick somebody because I honestly don't know which way to go with this one. I was thinking about it earlier, so it will be interesting. We're gonna get when we do get to it. It will be an interesting, uh, yeah. an interesting combo or interesting prediction. But um, yeah. Good shit. Next up, we have Shara, the lion. Shara coming out with Rohit Raju versus Jake something. Uh, this is a short little Haas fight. Nothing crazy. Just hard hitting. Two big, strong guys hitting each other hard. Raju causes a distraction. Shara kills Jake with the with the sky high. To Dilo's credit, he said, Stuff. is that the sky high? Uh, but it, it was very impressive because Jake's a big man and he brought Jake up pretty damn high credit to jake for jumping but still uh impressive finish uh gets the w not much here but impressive finish i, I like the slow build for shara keep him limited no, he, he could just come in and kill people that's fine how'd you think about this yeah i like that the roles are reversed now because we're so used to shara being out there for Ruhi raju and then like you know as annoying as or he raju is he he has an in ring, but he could definitely bring that, you know, that managerial energy as well on the outside and just interfering in the matches as well, like he did here for this win. Uh, like you said, it was a quick, quick match. Nice little back and forth between the two. Uh, Jake something definitely jumped up, <laughs> made that made that sky high 
look as good as it was. But you no, know, overall, I gotta give props to Shara. He's I, I I also like that this this slow little build up that they're doing for him. And again, it's because it's out of the ordinary that we're used to. Far as Rohi Raju being that main guy with Shara in the background, but now we have it. The roles are reversed, so it's always nice to keep things fresh. Next up, we have Kiera Hogan coming out with Tasha Steeles. Fire flavor, your knockout, ugh, your knockouts, impact tag team champions. Damn, Mary Jane almost got me. Uh, she's up against Jordan Grace. She's out dolo. Jazz retired last week. Jordan dominates the match, pretty much the whole match. Tasha Steeles comes to interfere at the end while Jordan goes for a pin to cause the DQ. Then they decide to just beat her down post-match. But out comes Rachel Ellering to make the save. If you've seen Rachel Ellering, you know she is a decent hand. Uh, I've seen her in WWE for that tournament. I believe it was the Mae Young tournament, the first uh, the first one they had. And uh, yeah, it's a, that looks like that'll be a tag team partner for the Rebellion going up against the champs for the for the belts. Uh, they they fight off the heels. They stand tall. Uh, I would have saved this for Rebellion. But at the same time, it's not as big as return that, you know, I would think. So, I don't know. I like it, though. I like it. It's a fresh face, I think. So, I'm, I'm which, here for it. Which the impact, or the knockouts division definitely needs. Definitely needs. They just lost uh, Jazz. Uh, I know Jordan Grace's contract is coming up. Like, it's it's definitely dwindling. So, I think, uh, what's her name? Just left as well. Uh Nevaeh, I think she's done with Impact too. So we're yeah, they definitely need some fresh faces. But overall, yeah, this was another great match. Probably one of my favorite matches on the card. Uh, it's always it's always good to see Jordan Grace in the ring because she never disappoints. And then Kiara Hogan can just take a beating. So she definitely she, she sell her sells her ass off for uh, for her opponents. But I have to apologize. Because I thought that it was going to be ODB coming to the aid of Jordan Grace, going to be a tag team partner at Rebellion against Fire and Flavor. But again, I don't, I'm not upset to be wrong. Uh, we get a new face. Like I said, it makes the story fresh. We have an, uh, a, a whole new uh, addition to the storyline now. So, and, you know, who, see, yeah, can't. Keep uh, can't keep going, man. I'm 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 too excited, getting ahead of myself, about to jump into the predictions and stuff. But yeah, I I like the fact that you know, care oh, not care. Tosh Steels uh, interfered in the, the you know cause of DQ, cause it's like fuck this, we don't need to win. Let's just beat this bitch ass. So <laughs> yeah, like that's that was that's the idea that heels have, and like it came to fruition. So I was I was down for that, and then just the save from Rachel Ellering. It's icing on the cake. I'm a little disappointed because we won't be getting titles and titties, but it's fine. That's the only, yeah, that's the only <laughs> part I don't like. It's fine. It's fine. Early in the night, we have a Violet by Design vignette. They put over violence, which is which is cool. Uh, they're hyping up the match versus Eddie Edwards, which Eric Young will have later on tonight. It is the main event. And they were also hyping up, you know, the feud and the rebellion match that will be an eight man, a four on four tag team match. Our main event is Eric Young versus Violent by Design. I mean, accompanied by Violent by Design versus Eddie Edwards with beer guns and Willie Mack. Physical, hard-hitting match, fast start. Eddie was dominating until we cut to the commercial break. Eddie's still dominating, wearing Eric Young down. Eventually, Eric Young gets the momentum back. He starts fighting back. This turns into a good back and forth. Uh, eventually, we have a brawl on the outside between all the accompanying individuals and Joe Doring causes a minor distraction to Eddie Edwards and Young hits him with the almighty roll up one two three and Eric Young gets the win but we just have a crazy brawl to end the show good way to send us into rebellion even though that's not that's not the main main focus of what this episode was this is something I'm definitely looking forward to at rebellion so this was a the, the carnage I think was a good way to end the show but um, how do you feel about the the match? Yeah, this is uh, the another 
one of my favorite matches of the night. Definitely a great way to end the show. Definitely a great way to build up this this the cap off the momentum for the most part for this four on four match at rebellion between Bob by design and the beard guns, Eddie Edwards and Willie Mack. Uh, a great match between Eddie Edwards and um, uh, Eric Young. A very good match. I like the fact that they talked about the impact style. One of these, the, both of these, one, both of these guys are pillars of impact history and as much as they've accomplished and done in impact wrestling period in their, their, their lineage. Um, and then they play up on it on commentary too. Uh, Matt Striker saying, what is impact? Or I, I don't remember if it was Matt Striker or D-Lo, but they're like, what is impact? What's the style of impact? And like, next thing you know, Eddie and, and uh, Eric Young just start going at it. And like, that's it. Like that hard hitting, that, that action paced, that methodical, Everything that's just like we're here to fight, that's impact wrestling. That's the impact style. And these guys actually show that while commentary was talking about it. So I I I appreciated that. And then, you know, just I'm just ready for this match as well. The almighty roll up, it is what it is. That 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 always takes it takes me out of the match, but it is what it is. I'm not even going to complain about it because this was a great match to watch. Yeah, I'm, I feel like you. I'm the same way with the roll up, but like <laughs> I feel like this was necessary because we're gonna yeah. we're gonna get like a, a defined like clear winner on Sunday. Yeah, so yeah. This was this was fine for me. Uh, it is what it is. Before we get into the the main focus of this show, we're gonna get into a few segments that just happened a long way. Feel free. To chime in, we get a Matt Cardona promo, uh, basically hyping up against his match against My- uh, Myers or his challenge. Then we get a good My- Brian Myers promo, which I I'll thought give was him actually, that. yeah, I'll I give thought him that. I thought it was a pretty good promo. He tells Matt Cardona to fucking move on, <laughs> leave him alone. He's like, you know, he that's what he did. He moved on, and Matt Cardona followed him. It was just like. That's what he needs to do. He gets. He needs to get rid of his weight. Takes off his eye patch. He accepts the challenge. We're gonna have the match of rebellion finally. I'm here for it. I like the promo. Though. Yeah. I was like, damn, Ryan Myers finally. Shit. Finally, I right? to, yeah, I had to admit that. Yeah. Right. Next up, we got we get a Sammy Callahan promo. He's all glitched out and shit in his 1995 camera in his fucking panic room. Uh, he's disappointed at Trey Miguel. They could have been on top together. They could have, they could have been owning everything. But instead, he has to teach him a lesson. He has to break his legs. He, he needs to take his legs apart from him. Basically. He needs to detach his actual lower body from his, from his upper body. Because they are having a last man standing match at Rebellion. Then we get a Trey Miguel segment. And he's at the wrestling school with his old trainer. The one that Sammy beat up uh, however many months ago. And he's getting a pep talk. He got to do this for himself. Can't do it for anybody else. He has nothing to prove to Sammy. Even though Sammy's making it seem like he has something to prove. He has nothing to prove. But he has to do it for himself. He has to prove it to himself that he can do this. Another one, he talks about breaking Sammy's legs. A lot of violence. A lot of violence going on here. Uh, we get a nice training montage. Like, he, you know, he was the... <laughs> <laughs> the urban Rocky. Rocky. Yeah, yeah. Urban Rocky. I, I liked it though. He was doing like CrossFit shit, doing bumps, you know, showing some moves and athleticism. It was cool. Why not? It, I don't think it was needed for this type of feud, but uh, whatever. I'm, I'm always here for, for a training montage. <laughs> How'd you feel? You, yeah, it was, uh, both of them were decent. I, I agree. I don't, I'm like, uh, like, why does it matter if you're training? This is a fight. You you come in to wrestle. Sammy's coming to fucking to fight you, not to wrestle you. But you know it is what it is. If it's a last man standing match, I'm doing leg presses and squats and shit. Like <laughs> can't get these like New down. Jack. I'm showing up with the fucking shopping cart full of shit. <laughs> he got the blade, Jeff. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's a shit. It'd be what's the balls? Man? Down, motherfucker. Transit, mass transit, it'll be mass transit all over again. I ain't getting up now. <laughs> you know yeah. what we didn't have on impact? Fucking 
It's when I it's know, powers. Daddy. I know, Daddy. We didn't have it today, Daddy. Uh, but it's all good. I'm, I'm sure they're making a spot for it. They better. Um, it better be something rebellion. amazing at Rebellion. Yeah. Pissing me off. <laughs> If we don't get Swingers Palace at Rebellion, <laughs> I'm not watching anymore, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, and no pay that, but it's fine. We don't need yeah, to pay that's, that. Yeah, that's yeah. We don't need to pay that every week. It's fine. Uh, we get into the to the nitty gritty of this episode. Everything is really centered around the main event of Rebellion, which is of course title versus title. Want to take all Impact and TNA World Champion Rich Swan versus the AEW World Champion, the best in the world, the cleaner Kenny Omega. You get predictions for Rich and Kenny, and uh, only the Good Brothers believe Kenny Omega is going to pull this off. Everybody in Impact, even the heels, are rooting for Rich Swan, which I like that because it shows the camaraderie of Impact Wrestling. Got to take them serious as a roster. They're a cohesive unit. Uh, good. That's good. That's good shown right there. A little disappointed Rich Swan hasn't showed up on AEW or didn't at all before this match, but you know, it is what it is. Rich Swan comes out to the ring. He's pissed about getting slapped last week. Uh, I told you, Kenny slapped him into this week, and he's here this week now. He's not happy about it. So uh he calls out Kenny, man. He wants that smoke. He wants to get it on right now. <laughs> I wanted that smoke. You just made me blow it out. <laughs> shit. That shit caught me Ken- off guard. Kenny and Callis appear on screen. They can't make it. They're not at the building. Sunday will be the last day of Swan's title ring. Um, you know, Kenny just being a dick. Putting himself over. This is the end. He's going to add another title to the collection. He's to the collection, as he likes to call it. Moose returns out of nowhere. Out of fucking nowhere, like an RKO. Of... <laughs> and he congratulates Rich Swan. <coughs> he wants to give him advice, but he wish he wishes Rich Swan luck first. But if he loses the titles, if he loses the titles, he's gonna whip that ass. That's it, man. Moose, Moose, Moose makes his return. It's not too soon. It's always good to see Moose. <laughs> uh, I would have saved it. I would have saved it for after the rebellion, whatever happens in rebellion. But it's all good. I really, uh, I like the hype, man. I like the hype. And I think, but as crazy as it fucking sounds, all right, we'll get into we'll get into the predictions after. How did you feel about this? The whole build up. Uh, all right, so I have like like eighty percent of the build up to this. I'll say eighty five. The other fifteen percent is on like it's only one sided. All the momentum and building and storyline shit is coming from Impact. Even though AEW is involved, I read like I read something about Tony Tony Khan saying that he like obviously we know he pays for the paid ads. So he's like, he doesn't promote Impact on Dynamite, like, just for the fuck of it. If they want to do it, he's like, they should pay and do it, which I understand. But also, your world champion, the star of your company is in somewhere else. Like, and you're promoting that, but why wouldn't you promote both so that the people that don't know about your, or the people that don't know that this is happening... You can get them to go see your world champion. To you're definitely going to get, you know, cut of the revenue, all that type of shit. Whatever the case may be, business wise, it would just make more sense if you put more eyes on this main this main event of a pay per view <laughs> on your show. But that's neither here nor there. But back to the whole build up of the storyline. Definitely been enjoying it. That slap that Rich got last week. My God, I felt it tonight. He ain't like that shit whatsoever. He's like, yo, you gonna slap me? It's like, remind me of Kevin Hart shit. Yo, you gonna slap me, bitch? You gonna slap me in front of my friends? It remind me of that shit. But 
then fucking moose come out of nowhere. I love that they did this shit. Oh, hold up. Yeah, you know, heel shit, Don Callis, Kenny Omega, they aren't in the building. They don't respect Rich. Clearly they don't. He just slapped him last week. He didn't even bother to see this nigga this week. So yeah, all disrespect, disrespectfully. But yeah, moose come out of nowhere. I love that they did this because we pretty much know where it's, well, I don't know. We might have different opinions on this, but in my opinion, pretty much know how this match is going to end or how it's going to go. But in my opinion, the fact that they put brought Moose back is what we've been talking about for literally for months. How Kenny would beat Rich and Moose will be the one to beat Kenny because he just, he's a, a, definitely a star that could use the rub and you know be the new savior of Impact after Kenny Omega came and took shit took shit over because Rich couldn't do the job. But that's spoiling for the predictions. <laughs> sorry for the spoilers for the predictions, but yeah. Uh, we'll sorry. Right. Yeah. It's all right because we're, we're almost there. We're, we're basically there. It was a good episode of Impact, but let's get into the predictions for Rebellion this, uh, on this Sunday. We're going to start off with Fire and Flavor versus Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellering for the Knockouts Tag Team Championships. Who do you got? You know, it's been a, it's, it's been a nice ride on the fire, fire and Flavor flute. We had some fun times. But I think it's Jordan Grace's time uh, I know it's going to be kind of weird, but Rich Allen's good. But I guess, like, you just show up and get a title. It is what it is. Let's, I think Jordan Grace and Rich Allen are going to take the, we're going to be the new and new knockouts tag team champions. Still love fire and flavor, though. Okay. Think, think about it, though. Who Who else in the company on the women's side, right? Is there to complain about? I deserve a title shot first. There isn't anybody. No, Tenille Tenille's getting his title shot at. Oh, 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 and Alicia meant, said tag. I thought you meant tag. No, no, like just like in general, because the women's roster on on Impact isn't that deep. You know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? Everybody's really tied up and shit right now at the moment. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm going with uh, Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellering as well. I think they're gonna. I think Jordan Grace is gonna add to her resume. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, next up, we have Chris Sabin, James Storm, Beer Guns, Eddie Edwards, and Willie Mack versus Violet by Design, Eric Young, Cody Daner, Joe Doring, and Rhino, of course. <sighs> Want to go Violent by Design? Just because I, I like what I really like what they're doing right now, but it feels like the faces might pull this one out. Especially after Eric Young stealing that pin today. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go with the baby faces. <laughs> what about you? The uh, Eddie Edwards, Willie Mack, Beer Guns. Next up we have Trey Miguel versus Sam Callahan in a last man standing match. I think Trey Miguel pulls this off. <clears throat> it's yeah. a no brainer. He's doing wrestling Rocky. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the words either. I know what it sounds like though. Pa Hill Tunes coming to a Word. Apple Music store near you. Uh Matt Cardona versus Brian Myers finally. Come on, bro. I think the I think the broski gets this. Mm. Yeah, you know what? No, nah, I go with Brian Myers. I, I could see it happening. I, mean, too. I think he's gonna do some dickhead shit. Alexander and TJP. Uh, I don't. I mean, are they really gonna play hot potato with this with this championship? I don't think so. I want Josh Alexander to win, but I don't think they should. So I'm going to stick with Ace Austin. Everything you just said 
everything you just said was I was gonna say that shit, and I'm gonna stick with Ace Austin for the same fact. But if Josh Alexander does win this, I will be ecstatic. I don't give a fuck who wins as long as it's not TJP. Yeah, pretty much. I would not be disappointed if Josh Alexander wins. Next up, we have Diana Perrazzo defending her Impact Knockouts Championship against Sunil Dashwood. Now, this one's tough because I feel like there's not much for Diana to do except we have a weird dynamic here. It's heel versus heel. Is it possible you can separate? There's no Kimberly right now in the picture. Possible you can separate Susan from Diana. Diana loses the belt and somehow turns babyface. It's the only thing I can really think of that that Diana could do. She ran through the rest of the division already. What's next if she beats if she beats Tennille? Nobody. She might yeah. as well lose the belt to Tennille, turn face, and then chase Tennille, who can play a good heel, who probably can put on a good match. This is a underdog match. Well, I can't, not with fucking Rich Swan and Kenny Omega on the card, but on any other Impact. Plus special. <laughs> this would be a contender for match of the night or a dark horse because I think both of these women can perform. Excuse me, sorry. So I'm going to go with Sunil Dashwood. <coughs> Cough it out. Cough it out. <coughs> think about it. <laughs> That's what I'm trying Cough to do. Cough it out. out. Back on the street. <laughs> I got this pot in my system. Yeah, so. yeah. No, nah, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so I don't know, man. <laughs> Last time I bet against Diana, I, I paid the price. So, but if I ever was to bet against Diana again, it would be for this match. Um, just the fact that she has beaten everybody except for Tennille Dashwood. And the story bigging it up is the fact that they've wrestled outside of Impact before and Deanna's never beat her. So if I mean I they could go either way with that story because I don't think they would bring it up unless one Deanna obviously doesn't beat her again and they could just run with that. Or this is the other side of the double edged sword, Deanna does beat her. So, like, where does she go from there? Like, she just beat everybody. So, I'm going to just stick with Tennille. And if, you know, Deanna retains, I'll I'll beg for forgiveness from the Demon Slayer. But, yeah, that's where I'm going with it. And they could keep playing off the fact that she's never beat Tennille. You know? She could lose. And it's just, like, it makes the story that much better. Because yeah. now when she got a chase as a babyface for that for that title, then it means something, you know? It means a little bit more when she finally gets that win. So hopefully that's the route they go. I think that's the only route they got left for Deanna Perrazzo. And then she can have a nice little run as a babyface and go through some heels. Or whoever else, it doesn't matter. Next up, we got Finn Juice defending the Impact Tag Team Championships against the Good Brothers. I think the Good Brothers get it back. Yeah. I think this was just to get uh, some some foreign eyes on the Impact Tag Team Championship. The know? partnership. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's cool for now. You know, they, they're testing the waters. So this is still weird. We're still early. We're still early. Uh, oh. But yeah, I, I'm going with the Good Brothers. I think I yeah. think they get the titles back. Yeah, Good Brothers. Unanimous. And finally, the main event, Rich Swan versus Kenny Omega. Title versus title, winner take all, Impact World Championship, AEW World Championship. It's a lot of gold. I want to say Rich Swan. It's going to sound absurd, I think, but I want to give Rich Swan a 25% chance of pulling this off. So I think Impact's done a good job of building faith in Rich Swan, regardless of him not appearing on Impact and all this shit. 
But like, damn, it's Kenny Omega. There's no fucking way the AEW World Championship goes this, you know, this way. And I do think we get a clean finish, or not a not a clean finish, but we get a finish where the titles change hands. So I'm going with Kenny Omega. I already spoiled this earlier, or I think it's going to happen. Five stars. Bold prediction. Four and three quarter stars. Four, four and a half, two, four and three quarter stars. I think that's what this match is going to do. Because these names, these, these, these guys, these boys can go, and this is going to be a dope ass match. I say if they get how many is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's like nine matches. There's eight matches. Eight, eight matches. matches. Yeah. Uh, four, you could, uh, three, three and a half hour event, maybe. These guys get 25 minutes to 35 minutes. The impact, no pun intended, but the impact of this match, you know, with, with the titles changing hands and shit, yeah. if it goes that way, and Uncle Dave being a fucking Kenny Mark, <laughs> think, I think he would possibly break the scale. Five and a quarter. I thought Old I was prediction. Yeah. Old prediction. I think he'll go five and a quarter for this shit if it turns out really good, which it will, because both guys are amazing. So I'm gonna say five stars though. Just throwing that out there. Of course, you can hear us talk about this rebellion. Of course, a half hour after rebellion finishes, live on the True Hill Heat YouTube channel, so you can join us there. But this episode of Blunt Impact is over. It was fun. It was a nice little go-home show leading into Rebellion. Very story-heavy. The wrestling wasn't great, but it was solid. So I enjoyed it. Ness, where can we find you at? You guys can follow me on Twitter at Skinny underscore Kravitz. You can follow me on Instagram at skinny underscore underscore Kravitz. Catch me on Blunt Impact and join the jabronis with my man Chris G. We form the Pie Heels. Check the ropes. You can also catch me on NX3 with my man Chris G once again. Romeo Anthony Cologne, the Bastard Brack. We, re- we, uh, we review and we fuck. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, it's just, this shit gotta go. We review NXT. Catch me on Fusion of Honor, my man, the Stat King, man of a thousand and four numbers, where we review MLW and Ring of Honor. The Roundtable Rebel, catch me on the round tables. Look out for that Rebellion live recap this Sunday. Come in, bring your blunts for the impact. See what I did there. And uh, as always, you can listen to my illustrious voice on true toxicity. Oh, yeah. You can find me at True Heel Chris G. Blood Impact, of course. You want to see us, uh, you know, you want to talk about Impact. That's why we're here. NX3, we cover NXT. That's how we do. Joints and Jabronis, we do uh, all the botches. Pretty good episode that just dropped. I encourage you guys to check that out. And Round Tables, you can find Ness all the time. You can find me most of the time. Definitely find me on uh, on this one for Rebellion. And True Toxicity, I'm there sometimes too. But you can hear Ness all the time. So for the three-time, three-time, three-time baby-making champion of the world, for our co-host Mary Jane, I'm your boy Chris G. We will see you guys Next week, check out Rebellion. Let us know what you think. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Have a good fucking weekend. Peace.